In our last class, we are looking at um, advanced cost of capital, and we concluded the long question we are looking at. I'm sure a number of you now have come to know that question there. That's the title, that's the name of the company, which question we are doing. <clears throat> And our lesson really, we picked a number of lessons uh, on the concept of advanced cost of capital. I'm sure by the time we were finishing that long question, a number of us, we had picked some lessons, which lessons you can apply also on many other questions. Okay. Concepts such as the and gearing and regearing, combined beta, okay. uh, the cost of debt using the credit spread method, that also came out. That also came out. One item that also came out was the valuation of bonds. We spoke about how to estimate the market value for the bond. So that was uh, something that uh, came out. How to estimate the market value of a bond. So that came out, how to estimate the market value of the bond. Well, we say that the, what you do, you simply discount all the benefits. All benefits. On the bond. This concept will come out again today. And today in this lecture, and the next one, we want to zero in on the concept of bonds. And the, the students who took the exams in March, a number of them indicated that the, in our Question one, this is sort of a question that they got, bond valuation. And the concept of bond yields. So I'm sure those uh, students would want to see how the question could have been tackled. So let's uh, get started with those uh, few remarks about what we'll be talking about. Let's move. We start with the concept of bond duration. Bond duration. So that's the first item that we look at. So what is the duration of the bond? The average time taken to recover the cash flow from an investment is not only affected by the maturity date, but also by the coupon weight. Which determines the interest payments. Now there's an expression here time taken to recover the cash flow from an investment. Now the time taken to 
recover investment. What do we call it in investment appraisal? The term taken to recover your investment cost. In investment appraisal, what do you call this? The term taken to recover initial investment cost. In investment appraisal, what do we call this term taken? In investment appraisal, what do we call this term taken to recover initial investment? Mr. P, could it be um, the payback period? Yes, it is. It is. It is. That's the payback. So some of you will say, oh, so are we talking about the payback here? Yes, we're talking about the payback. Duration is about the payback, really. That's what you notice. So when you hear duration, just go back to payback. And the, how quickly it takes us to pay back really depends on the inflows, isn't it? The cash inflows. Now, in this case, we're talking about investment in what? In financial assets such as a bond. So here we're talking about you as a fund manager investing in a bond. How long does it take you to recover the money that you invested? Now you're saying the time taken to recover the cash flow for investment is not only affected by the maturity date. Because maturity date, that's when it, we actually recover or we receive the initial investment, but also the coupon rate or the amount that you'll be receiving throughout the investment of the project. We want to be able to compare bonds quickly. So bond A and bond B. One the a method of comparing these. Should I go into bond A, bond B? One of the things that look at is the payback. So I want to compare which, buy, which bond pays back early for these two. That is where the duration comes in. And you know that uh, payback is a measure of risk, isn't it? Payback is a measure of risk. The shorter the payback, the lower the what? Huh? The shorter the payback, the lower the risk. The risk. Yes. Those investments which pay back early, it means that it, the risk disappears. Duration gives each bond an overall risk weighting. Now that's very important. This expression we are using today, that will be learning how to calculate, gives each bond an overall risk weighting. That allows two bonds to be compared. I want you to pick this item. Two bonds to be compared. In simple terms, it is a composite measure of the risk expressed in years. So duration then in terms of the computation is a weighted average length of time taken to receive the benefits on the bond. What are the benefits? The benefits is the coupon interest and also redemption amount. The weights being the present value of the benefits involved. So what do we pick from here? What well, duration is the time taken really to do what? To recover your benefits. So it's a form of a payback. It's a form of a payback. Time taken to recover your benefits. And indeed, when you want to invest, that's a very important item. When do you recover your money? In any investment. And that's what we do. 
So once we know the duration of the bond or two bonds, then we can readily compare them. We can compare them. So from here, I want you to walk out with the concept of the payback in your mind and tell yourself that this is the payback on bonds. Okay. It is a weighted average of time taken to recover the benefits of the bond. And immediately, you also bring in the concept of risk. It's also a measure of risk. Bring also the issue of comparing two bonds. If somebody wants to compare two bonds, A and B, let's say this bond stands for three years, this one runs for six years or five years. How do you compare these two? Tell yourself that to compare these two, I'll calculate the duration. Okay. So we're going to do our first computation so that first of all, before we, we, we say more things, all of us must be able to do what? To calculate the duration. Magic has a bond called bond X in issue, which has a nominal value of a thousand. Now I'm sure we remember the concept of a nominal value. And it's redeemable at par. So this is the condition for redemption. The bond is a 6%, bond X is a 6% bond. 6%. What do we call the 6%? That's a coupon rate. Meaning that it's the rate at which the interest is payable. So interest is payable Mm -hmm. at the coupon rate. So when you want to calculate interest, the interest is paid at the coupon rate. Maturing in three years. So in three years time, we need to pay back the owners, the money. And the terms are that to redeem it at par. So we pay back the par value, which is a thousand. And as gross redemption yield. Now, is Mr. Kunguru on the in the house today? I haven't seen him. Gross redemption yield. You see, remember last in the last class, he was asking uh, me about the concept of the yield. And indeed, when you get a question involving bonds, this language will come up. Gross redemption yield. Investors are the ones who use this expression. Gross means that it is before tax. Redemption yield is simply the required rate of return by investors. So the gross redemption yield is 3.5%. The current price of the bond is 1070. So we need to understand and be able to relate to these variables. We need to understand and be able to relate to these variables that we're talking about here. So for you as a company, this gross redemption yield, huh? To you as a company, this is what we call the pre-tax cost of date. This is what we call the pre-tax cost of date. That's what it is. And if you remember, what we say, how do you estimate the market value of a bond? Market value of the bond, how do we estimate it? We do what? We discount all benefits.
for benefits. What do we use for discounting? What do we use for discounting? Pre-tax cost of date. And this is what investors call a gross redemption yield. Okay, now let us see, calculate our duration. So how do we calculate the duration? Hmm? The basic duration, the basic duration, which we also call Mm -hmm. is the one that we want to calculate first. So this is the basic duration, what you call macular duration. So step number one, I want to learn how do we calculate this and don't lose track of the fact that this is a measure of risk and it's a form of a payback. It's a form of a payback. So how do we do all this? Here's what we do. Here is what we do. We take the cash flows, the benefits. What are the benefits? 60, 60, and in year three, there's 60 plus the redemption amount of a thousand. And that's what gives us a 1060. That's what you put here. We discount these. We discount these at the pre tax cost of debt at 3.5%. So these are the discount factors for year one, for year two, and for year three. So you discount these amounts and you get these present values. You get these present values. I want you to do me I want you to do me a favor. Can you please confirm these discount factors? Can you confirm the discount factors? An exercise please. Let's confirm these discount factors. So the one for you one is 1.035. Let's go, do you get the answer? The first one, can somebody confirm? 0 0.952 is what I'm getting. One divided by 1.035. I did by 1.03, just, okay, let me do it again. It's 3.5%. 0 0.9, zero point nine, zero point nine, six, six. yes. It is just an exercise in you calculating the discount factors because it will come up. Then you take this figure again, Divide by 1.0355, 1.035. So you see what you do, just take that, divide by that again. Let's check, are we getting the next one? Yes, I'm getting 0 0.934. 
Yes. So again, you take a 0 0.934. You divide again by 1.035. What do you get? Zero point nine zero two. Yes, I hope all of us are happy with the that computation. Mister Perry, just a quick question. Yes. Do you always discount using the pre-tax cost of the date? Yes. Find the market value of the bond. You always do that. Is that okay, so? Yes, thank you. All right. Yeah. Your question is, why do you use a pre-tax cost of date? I can hear that in your question. Why should you use a pre-tax cost of date? Here's the reason. The reason is simple. You are calculating the market value for the whole market. Let's make the in, a value to put in the whole market. Now the market will have different tax positions. Depending on what you're looking at, not everybody is at the same tax rate. So what tax are you going to use? So that is why we say these values are normally calculated gross. And that is why we use the pre-tax cost of it. Now let's go. After, so we've got the present values, that's step number one. And these present values are giving us 1070, which we already have. Does this come as a surprise? No. That's the value that we have here. So that doesn't come as a surprise. Note that the total present value of the cash flows from the bond is equal to the current market price, which is what we expect. So that's the first step. Okay. Second now, you multiply each one of these by the years. You multiply each one of these by the years. The present values. are being multiplied by the years to get these values that you have here. And when you add it up, you have that. Duration. Duration is sum of present value of cash flows multiplied by the respective years. Sum of so the total present values which is this one multiplied by that so the sum of that that and that is what they're talking about here divided by the market price of the bond so that divided by that gives you this is the duration that we're talking about a weighted average of time taken to recover your benefits. Now, you do this. 57, 0.96 over 1070.12. You multiply by one. And you say again 56.04 over 
ten seventy point one two multiply by two plus nine fifty six point one two over ten seventy point one two multiply by three. Please can you do this computation and give me the answer? Can you do that computation and give me the answer? Spreadsheets. I hope you're using spreadsheets because you have a spreadsheet supposed to take less time. Two point eight four. Two point eight four. Hmm. Well, if you notice, we are doing the same thing. It's see that multiplied by that, that multiplied by that, that multiplied by that. But why is this presentation better? Why, why did I ask you to do this? Why did I ask you to do this? There's a reason. Let's just go back to this explanation here. Duration is the weighted average length of time to the receipts of bonds benefits. So what are we waiting? What weights are we using? The weights being the present value of the benefits. In simple terms, it is a compound measure of the risk expressed in years. So now look at the weights, the way that the issue of the weights has come up here. So what weight has we, have we given to this year? This year, what weight have we given to it? That's the weight which you have given to it. That's the weight given to year one. What of this weight, what weight have you given to this? The weight you have given is this one. What weight have you given to that? That's the weight. So these are the weights. Give me the weights, please. The first one is 0 0.1. Give me the weights. I want, to, I want you to walk away, think about the concept of weights that you are actually calculating a payback, but using a weighted approach. What is the weight in the first one? 0. 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Next one, what is the weight? Zero point one zero. Next last one, what is the weight? Two point six eight. Zero point two six eight. Sorry, two point six eight. Mm, mm, the weight only, you know, or you've seen what I've circled there, eh? you don't include the one, no? It's just what I'm looking, is just oh. this. Just where, where I've circled. Eight. Okay, okay, sorry. Yep. Okay. 0 0.8934. So what is this yeah. one? What's the weight here? What's the weight here? 
Zero point? Zero five. This is zero point zero five again? Yes, that's what I'm getting. I don't know if someone is getting a different answer. <laughs> what of here? Zero point? Point eight nine three four. Zero point eight nine. Then you want balance to hundred. If you give me zero point eight nine, because zero point zero five, zero point zero five. This was zero point zero zero point nine zero. So which one should I change? Should I change this one? Zero point zero six. Hmm. Okay. Let me change this one then. What I want you to pick is the concept of weights. So we have the other one is zero point zero five. The second so, one. So the last zero one then should be what? 0 0.9, isn't it? 0. Point, if we, it's 0 0.893. Then you are not balancing because this should add up to one, isn't it? That is why I, I increased this to 0 0.06. So that I can balance. It's adding up. Come again. It's, it's adding up to one. It's adding up to one. If I put 0 0.5 here. So the first one is 0 0.054. Mm -hmm. The second one is 0 0.052. The third one is 0 0.893. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay. So zero point zero five. So the second one is zero point yes. And this one is zero point zero point zero point zero five zero five two. Yeah. And the last one zero point eight nine three. Eight nine three. Eight nine three. Then it's adding up to one. All right. So the point is, these are the weights. So what we have calculated, it's a payback. A payback year one, year two, year three. So just getting an average of these. What do we use as the weights? The present values. Now in this computation, it's very easy, but the concept of Weighted average doesn't come out prominently, if you notice. It's very easy, and in the exam, the easiest way to use this method. Well, you just have the years, the present values, you subtract, get the totals, you multiply, add them up, get the totals, and just have to divide 30, 38, and it 10, 70. But when you are studying and you want to understand what am I doing, you must say, what I'm getting, I'm getting an average of one, two, and three, and I'm using a weighted average. I hope that is all right, eh? Good. Let us move on to another item. So I hope all of us are able now to see how to calculate the duration. Let's move to the next item. The next item now is modified duration. So the question is, what is modified duration then? Uh, Mr. Piri, sorry, I, if I may ask a question. Yes, please. Yes, uh, in terms of uh, duration, can we express it in terms of the mean, like summation fx over summation f? Summation of what? Summation, summation fx over summation just, f. Just a minute, let's see here. Let me take out all this. All this. Summation of who? Summation fx over summation f. Over summation f. 
Yes. So what is the F standing for? Uh, the F stands for the years. The F stands for the years. <laughs> no, you can explain it. This, this, the, the F is the years. Yes. Uh -huh. And the X stands for? The cash flow. The cash flows. So this is the X, or are you saying the X is this one here? That's the X. Yes. That's the X, that's the X. So that multiplied by that, that multiplied by that, that multiplied by that. And then we divide by the sum of who? The sum of who? The values. So that plus that plus that gives us this. So that's the sum of F. And then Fx, that's okay. There's no problem with that. And it shows that what we're looking at is an average where you've got the frequency, you've got the frequency and also the values. That's okay, there's no problem with that. Okay. Okay, sir. Good. Mr. Perry. Yes, please. Since you've shown us two ways of presenting the answers, mm. the, the other one brings out the concept of uh, the weighted, the weights uh, clearly. Yeah. The, the other one, which is more straightforward, the first one, I think it doesn't really bring them yeah. out. But do we, can we choose to use either of them without losing out the maths? Yeah, you can choose any. The quickest is just do the table. The first one is the quickest to so just arrange your table in the spreadsheet, put the values, multiply the number of years, add them up. It's the easiest. There's no need of trying to show the weights at all. Okay. I, I, I talk about it because when you're reading your statements, you're going to say, but where is the weighting here? So just demonstrate the question, the concept of the weights. Eh? Now let us see, come to modified duration. Modified duration is a measure of the sensitivity. Sensitivity, sensitivity of what? Of the price of a bond to what? To a change in the interest rates. Now, this is very important. Now, this is based on what we have seen already. We have seen that how do you estimate the price of the bond? We simply discount the cash flows using what? For in a very simplified language, using the interest rate. So, if the interest rate goes up or down, certainly that will affect what the price of the bond. Meaning, meaning. Let's come back here. Let's come back here. Uh, this was discounted at what? at 3.5%. And we got a value of how much? 10.70. Okay. I want you to quickly try this because we're talking about sensitivity of this value to that value. All of you, can you take your, if you're using the spreadsheet, we're very, very fast. Can you rediscount these cash flows at 4.5? Please, can you read discount at 4.5? These cash flows. Let's just read discount them. This time around, I want at 
plus we discount at 4.5. Discount factors. Who has discount factors at 4.5? 0 0.957. 0 0.957. Next one, 0. 0.916. 916. And the last one, 0. 876. 876. Okay, so you multiply and let's find the answers. Two decimal places. Let's find the answers. The first one. Seven point four two. Come again. Five seven point four two. Okay, next one. 54.94. And the last one? Uh, 928.87. Total? 1041.23. Excellent. Well done. You organized. So when you increase the interest rates from 3.5 to 4.5, what has happened to market value of the bond? Hmm? What has happened? Gone down. It's gone down. Let us say drop our computation. We repeat the computation this time around at 2.5. Let's read discount at 2.5. Let's go. What are the factors again? So the first one we have 0 0.976. 0 0.9. 76. Okay, next one, 0. Point. 0 0.952. 952. And the last one, 0. Point. 929. 929. Let's multiply by 60. By 60 by 1060. What are the answers? Um, the first one are 58.0544. 54. Then 57.11. 57.11 and? At 4.82. Come again. Nine eight eight four point three three two. I've missed that. Nine eight four. Uh huh. Nine eight four point three two. Three two. What's the total? Ten nine nine point nine six. Okay, so let's go. At two point five. The value is 1099.96. At 3.5, the value is 1070.12. At 4.5, the value is 1041. Point two three. So this is what we are talking about. This is the concept we want to talk about. That's the concept we want to talk about. When uh, there is a reduction in the interest rates or in the yields to there, what has happened this value? It has gone up. If there's an increase, what has happened? It has gone down. So this is the 
the concept we want to talk about. The sensitivity of the bond price to interest rates. Now, if we have bought into that, we can come here. Modified duration is a measure of the sensitivity of the price of bonds to a change in interest rates. If interest rates go up by 1%, by how much will the market value of the bond go down? This is what is measured by modified duration. Rather than looking at weighted average time it takes to receive the bond's benefits, modified duration measures how sensitive the price of the bond is to a change in the interest rate. And how do you measure it? That duration that we calculated earlier on goes on top. And down here, you put one plus the gross redemption yield. So going by the question that we have already done ourselves, remember we've done one question already, we can go further and calculate what? The modified duration. How do we do that? You take our maculate duration, which is 2.84, which we have already calculated, divided by one plus 3.5%. What answer do we come up with? Do we agree with that? Two point seven four. So this is the measure of sensitivity of our bond price to changes in interest rates. Now I want to interpret this further because this is very common in your exam. So I want to interpret this further. I want to learn how to interpret this. So before we can make a final statement, using the above example on duration, we found above that, this can be used to determine the proportionate change in bond price for a given change in the yield. Now there's a little equation here, it shouldn't confuse anyone. There's a small equation here, we don't want anyone to be confused, it's very straightforward. The change in the price of the bond from where it was can be calculated as you take your modified duration, there's a minus y because relationship is inverse. When interest rates go up, the bond price goes down. That is why there's a minus. So this answer that we found here, our 2.84, our 2.74 is normally saying it's a minus value. So the change in the price of the bond can be calculated as you take modified duration multiplied by the change in the yields, so interest rates. So check, we take the change in the interest rates multiplied by modified duration. That will give you the change in the value of the bond that you expect. Are we together? If you want to find the change in the value of the bond, all you do is you take modified duration multiplied by the change in the interest rate. Now, some of you may say, wait a minute, let's test it on the figures that we have calculated ourselves. Let's test it on the figures that you have calculated. You calculated some figures. Remember the figures? The figures are here. There was a change when interest rates went up. So it went down from there to there. There was this change. When they went 
up there was this change. So let's 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 do our own. So what's the percentage change here? Can somebody find a clip for us? What's the what's the change? Mm -hmm. From there to there, what is the change? So change in the price over the price. So can somebody subtract this for me? Can somebody please subtract the change? What has been the change that we have seen? You subtract this. Ten seven ten point one two minus ten forty one point two three. What's the change in the price? It's 28.89. Okay. So this is the change that we have seen. Well, what was our price before? 1070.12, isn't it? 0.12. You divide what you get? From here, what do you get? So here we got, you are getting 0 0.026, uh, 0 0.027. Okay. So this is the change that you have seen in the price. Now, our equation says this can be found by doing what? Getting your modified duration. Now, what was the modified duration? The modified duration calculated it as what? 2.1. The modified duration is 2.74. 2.74. Multiply by the change in the interest. What was the change in the interest? Remember it was 3.5. We push it toward ourselves, 4.5. This is the 1% change, right? Eh? Uh, so you take modified duration, multiply by the 1%. <clears throat> what do you find? 0 0.1? Have you seen that? Eh? Mm -hmm. This is what you have calculated here, people. Mr. Mufa, that's what Mr. Mufa gave us. This change in the price is 0 0.027. 0 0.027. This was the same as what you found. Your 2.74 multiplied by your 1% change, which is 0 0.01. This is the same figure. So now let's see, make an overall statement. Let's come here now, let's do the interpretation. Modify the duration, what is it? The measure of the sensitivity of the price of the bond to change in interest rates. So interest rates change, like in our case, we spoke about the change of what? 3.5 to 4.5. When there's a change in the interest rates, the market value of the bond will change. In this case, it will drop. That drop, we can calculate it by taking modified duration, which is multiplied by the 1% or 0 0.01. So that's the interpretation of modified duration. 
So, <clears throat> as an investor or a fund manager, what is your interest? This can be used to determine the proportional change in bond price for a given change in yield as follows. So, you can argue that as an investor, sure, what I want to know is when there's so much change in interest rates, what will happen to, the, to my investment? Mm -hmm. So, if we, I multiply, mathematically we multiply this side by a P and I multiply this side by a P, what happens? That disappears. So the change in the price or value of your investment can be found as what? Modified duration, multiplied by the change in interest rates, multiplied by the original value. Like in our case, that little example that we did, it was 2.74 multiplied by the change in interest rates multiplied by the original value. Remember the original value? 1070.12. So this is the change in the value of your investment. This is the change in the value of the investment change in the price of the bond. When there's a change in what? In the interest rates. So this is what is important for us. We must be able We must be able to calculate the change in the bond price. So each time there's a change in the interest rate, you must know by how much we my bond price change. For instance, if there's a change of 0.5%, what will be the change in the price of the bond? You take that, it's a minus because it's a drop, multiply by that, multiply by that. So if interest rates increase by 0.5%, the market value of each bond will drop by 14.66. Have we understood the concept? Yes. Have we understood the concept of modified yes. duration? Yes. Mm, these are things you must understand way before the exam. So when the exam time comes, you just review these things, eh? Yeah. Let's uh, start concluding. So what are the benefits of duration? How does this information help us? That's what is even more important for us. How can we use this information? The duration that you have calculated. The basic duration. How does this help us? Duration allows different, duration allows bonds of different maturities and coupon rates to be directly compared. <clears throat> duration allows bonds of different maturities. One bond matures in three years time, another one in five years time. How do you compare these bonds? Just calculate their duration. This makes decision making regarding bond fin finance easier and more effective. If a bond portfolio is constructed, what's a bond portfolio? It's a basket of bonds. The bond portfolio is constructed based on the 
weighted average duration. It is possible to determine the portfolio value change based on estimated changes in interest rates. What does that mean? You're a fund manager and you have gotten so much money they are in this portfolio of bonds. These are bonds, different bonds. What is your worry as a fund manager or as an investor? When you hear that interest rates, yields have gone up or they have gone down, what you want to know is what is the impact on the market value of my bond? What is the impact on the market value? We have seen that when yields go up, the market values go down. So we want to find out if you hear tomorrow that yields have gone up by 0.05% or 0.05. What will happen to investment? That question can easily be answered using the concept of duration. It's fair the modified duration. Thirdly, managers may be able to modify interest rate risk. Remember that duration hmm, is a measure of risk, 2.84. So you can play around with this figure. You can manage the risk using the knowledge of duration. How? By changing the duration of the bond portfolio. For example, by adding shorter maturity bonds. So to this, Mm -hmm. If uh, you think this is too long, what do you do? Add shorter maturity bonds or those with higher coupon, which will reduce duration or risk. Or by adding longer maturity bonds or those with lower coupons, which will increase duration. So you can actually increase or reduce the risk by adding or taking away bonds with different with specific features. Now for you to do that, you need the knowledge of duration. Now, some of you may have questioned that. So this relationship that we have, we have learned, the change in the yields and the change in the prices, like the 2.74, is it going to hold at all levels? Is, is 2.74 a constant? The answer is no. The main limitation of duration is that it assumes a linear relationship between interest rates and price. That is, it assumes that for a certain percentage change interest rates, there will be an equal change in percentage change in price, which is 2.74. However, as interest rates change, the bond price is unlikely to change in a linear fashion. Rather, it will have some kind of a convex relationship with interest rates, see below. So this is what I've been doing, the price and the yield. Remember where we started? We started as we, we started with the yield of 3.5. And what was our value? Our value was 1070. Then we dropped this to hmm, 2.5. This changed to 1099. Then again, we took another value here. to 4.5, and this came to 1041. This is what we did, isn't it? Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, is this what we did? That's basically what we are doing. So what we are saying is that yes. as we worked on the assumption that the relationship is linear. Now you may find that if there's a very big increase, when you do your computation, you won't get that value per se. 
if you did the computation, you may find that actually the value will be somewhere there because the relationship is not linear. Meaning that if you went on the market with your graph paper and you started the uh, plotting on your graph, what you're going to get is, you won't get a straight line like this, no. What you get is, you get a line which curves like that. So, uh, using the duration to predict change in share price is only when there's a very small change, when there's a very small movement, because a very small movement can be connected by a straight line. But if there's a big change in interest rates there and there, you may find that your prediction may not be correct. So this drop is not constant throughout. So meaning that, so the advice that we give may actually be, may not be 100% correct. Hmm? It may not be accurate. This advice will only be accurate for small changes, for small changes in the yields. That's when this will hold. So let's conclude with this slide. When market interest, when market interest rates or yields fall, the market value of bonds rises. Why? Because the present value of the bonds fix future cash flows rises. When yields rise, the price of bonds falls. The change in bonds price is approximately the same in either direction for small. Fall or rise in the yields. For very small changes, yes. The drop is constant. For larger changes in yields, the change in the price is greater for the falls in yields than for rises in yields. Therefore, the relationship between yields and bond prices is not necessarily linear, unless for small changes, but it's a convex. Practice question. A 6% coupon bond paid annually has three years to maturity. Yield to maturity is 10%. Now, Mr. Mkunguru, you asked a question that these items, so yield to maturity, this expression yield to maturity is the same as the gross redemption yield. So yield to maturity, YTM, is the same as the gross redemption yield. As a company, this is also what we call your internal rate of return, or what we call the pre-tax cost of date. Remember, Mr. Hunguri asked us a question? Yes. So gross redemption yield, yield to maturity, internal rate of return, pre-tax cost of date, it's the same variables we're talking about. So here, we want you to calculate what? This duration, maculate duration, modified duration. We want you to calculate the actual percentage change of bond price for 1% rise of four in yields. Mm -hmm. Remember the change in the price equals one, the modified duration mm -hmm. duration 
modify duration, multiply by one, the change in the yield, hmm? multiply by one, the price. This gives you what you're looking for. So you need to calculate modified duration, multiply by the 1% change, multiply by the current market value. That will give you the change that you're looking for. All right, so we have given you something to work with. Eh? Yeah, we have given you something to work with. So in the next class, please, I want you to come back with the answer to that as we move on now to looking at the additional items. Okay. So that was our lecture for today. Please find time to go through. So that by the time we finish this, you can manage to answer some exam questions on the concept of bond yields, durations, and all. All right, so we see you Thursday, same time, eh? Thursday, 23rd. Thank you.